Thank you. Thank you. Let's begin with jobs in the economy, which Republican voters say is the most important issue to them in this election. There have been some real differences expressed in, on this stage on whether trade deals have been good for the American worker. One of Mr. Trump, the frontrunner's signature issues, is ending what he calls disastrous trade deals in order to bring jobs back to America. Governor Kasich, I'd like to start with you. You've been a strong advocate for these trade deals over the years. Critics say these deals are great for corporate America's bottom line, but have cost the U.S. at least one million jobs. How do you respond to the criticism that you've been catering to boardrooms at the expense of the American middle class? Well, Jake, I, I grew up in a blue-collar family, and uh, the simple fact of the matter is that, of course, we're sensitive about trade. One out of five Americans work in a, a job connected to trade. Thirty-eight million Americans are connected to it. But my position has always been we want to have free trade but fair trade. And I've been arguing all along that it is absolutely critical that when other countries break those agreements, we don't turn the process over to some international bureaucrat who comes back a couple, couple years later and says, oh, America was right and people were out of work. The fact of the matter is we have to have an expedited process. When people cheat, when countries cheat and they take advantage of us, we need to blow the whistle. And as President of the United States, I absolutely will blow the whistle and begin to stand up for the American worker. But we don't want to lock the doors and pull down the blinds and leave the world because, frankly, if we do that, prices will go up, people will buy less, other people will be out of work, and we don't want to see that happen. Trade, though, has to be balanced, and we have to make sure that when we see a violation, like some country that dumping their products into this country, believe me, as president, I will stand up and I will shut down those imports because they are a violation of the agreement we have, and the American worker expects us to stand up. And, Jake, my family worked in the steel industry, not with a white collar. I understand their plight. Mr. Trump, your critics say your campaign platform is inconsistent with how you run your businesses, noting that you've brought in foreign workers instead of hiring Americans, and your companies manufacture clothing in China and Mexico. Why should voters trust that you will run the country differently from how you run your businesses? Because nobody knows the system better than me. I know the H-1B. I know the H-2B. Nobody knows it better than me. I'm a businessman. These are laws. These are regulations. These are rules. We're allowed to do it. And frankly, because of the devaluations that other countries, their monetary devaluations that other countries are constantly doing and brilliantly doing against us, it's very, very hard for our companies in this country, in our country, to compete. So I will take advantage of it. They're the laws. But I'm the one that knows how to change it. Nobody else on this dais knows how to change it like I do. Believe me. Senator Rubio, last October you said that you're, quote, generally very much in favor of free trade. More recently, you've backed away from your support of some trade deals. If elected, will you support free trade deals even if it means the inevitable loss of U.S. jobs? No, I support trade, free trade deals that are good for America. We're 5 percent of the world's population. If all we do is sell things to each other, we can only sell to 5 percent of the people on Earth. We have to have access to the hundreds of millions of people in the world today who can afford to buy things. The problem is we are a low-tariff country. To import something into the United States is not very expensive. But many of these countries we can't export to because their tariffs are too high. And so I'm in favor of deals that allow us to bring down those tariffs so that America can sell things to all these people around the world. There are good trade deals and there are bad ones. So for example, here in Florida we have benefited greatly from the free trade deal with Colombia. It's allowed flour exporters to come into the United States, but it's created jobs for millions of, for hundreds of people who are now delivering those flowers and working in that industry. We have a surplus with Colombia. On the other hand, you've seen trade deals like in Mexico that have been less than promising in some aspects, better in others. Bottom line is, I, w I believe that America, if given access to foreign markets, our workers are the most productive in the world, our people are the most innovative on this planet. If it is a free and fair trade deal, we can compete against anyone in the world, and we need to in the 21st century. Senator Cruz, you were a supporter of the Pacific trade deal. But after taking some heat from conservatives, you changed your position. Why should these voters who don't like these trade deals trust that you will fight for them all the time and not just in election years? I, I, actually, that's incorrect. There are two different agreements. There's TPA and TPP. I, I oppose TPP and have always opposed TPP, which is what you asked about. And when it comes to trade, look, free trade 
when we open up foreign markets, helps Americans, but we're getting killed in international trade right now. And we're getting killed because we have an administration that doesn't look out for American workers and jobs are going overseas. We're driving jobs overseas. And, and the people who are losing out are in manufacturing jobs or the steel industry or the auto industry. But I'll tell you who else is going to be losing out, which is the service industry. This Obama administration is negotiating the Trade and Services Agreement, which is another treaty to allow services to come in and take jobs from Americans as, as well. And you've got to understand, trade and immigration are interwoven, and they're hurting the working men and women of this country. So the question is, what's the solution? It's easy to talk about the problems, but do you have a solution to fix it? And I think the solution is several things. Number one, we need to negotiate trade deals, protecting American workers first, not the corporate boardroom. Number two, we need to lift the regulations on American businesses here so we see jobs coming back. And number three, we need a tax plan, like the tax plan I've introduced, that will not tax exports and that will tax imports, and that will bring millions of high-paying jobs back to America. Let's talk more.